everyone, I'm James Bernard, I'm here at DubSpot, and today we're gonna talk a little bit about the new version of Reason. It's Reason 7 from Propellerhead Software. And there's a lot of really exciting new features that they've added to this version. Some features which a lot of people, including myself, have been waiting for for quite some time. And I'm gonna show you these new features and how they can help you make better music and streamline your workflow. All right, so we're gonna start off with the mixer section first, and there's quite a few things that Propellerhead has done that's updated this area. The first thing I wanna show you, and this is a big one for me at least, is we now have in the EQ, we have the ability to call up a Spectrum EQ. And that brings up a Spectrum Analyzer. So while the signal is running through, I'm gonna solo out this bass track that's playing here. And with the Spectrum EQ pulled up, we can see right away behind the EQ points, that's what this bass sound is doing. And it's pretty heavy in the low end, so if I wanna roll some of that off, immediately I start to see a difference in the spectrum behind the EQ. Now let's say I wanted to start EQing some other track that's here. Let's say maybe the drums that are here. Well, I can go into the drums by just selecting right over here in this pull down menu. And if I uh, have this follow selection checked on, then any track that I select here, the Spectrum EQ will follow as well. But if I don't have that on, I can also just very quickly see all the tracks that are here and see what their Spectrum EQ looks like. So it's pretty handy to have that there without having to flip back and forth from the mixer. Let's say I'm in the sequencer mode and that's where I'm doing my EQing. I want to kind of jump to different sections of the song and I want to EQ maybe that lead sound that's playing here. So it's really handy and you have the ability to change in the mixer itself. So We'll just pull the spectrum away for a second. All of these functions here, all of the abilities to change the frequency, the Q, that's all still reflected within the Spectrum EQ window as well. So really handy, and you also have that on the master section. So really great addition that's in Reason 7, and I think it's gonna help everyone to make their track sound much better, because having that Spectrum EQ gives you some representation of what frequencies could be offending in there. All right, so let's uh, move on to something else that's been added in the mixer section. And that's right down here at the bottom. And if you look here, we've got the ability to take tracks that we have. Let's say we've got a couple of tracks, for example, some bass tracks. And I wanna take those bass tracks and combine them together into one master track, busing or grouping, as commonly referred to on just about every DAW software that's out there. Um, this is a feature that had been missing from Reason up to now. There are ways that you could do it but it was not really the true sense of busing or grouping. Well, Reason 7 actually adds that. So what you do is you select at the bottom of the channel strip itself, you can select where you want to put it, and you can just create a new output bus and then assign it to that bus, and that could be across the board. So any of the other tracks or, or the channels that are in the mixer that you want to group into that bus, you just select it there at the bottom, and it's a pretty easy way to, to route things to that group. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna look at the bass parts here. Normally on some tracks I might have the drums stemmed out, where I might have the kick on one track, the snare on another track. That's a common thing to do. On this particular song, the drums are all just two channels, so we're not gonna do it there. But we're gonna take the bass parts, and there's three of them here. And I wanna actually take those three bass parts. They have a, a volume that kind of works in between them. This is why you might use grouping right here. So if I listen to the bass parts all together, we'll get to a part in the song where they're playing right over here. Let's look at those. So we've got our bass parts here, and if I wanted to take these bass parts that we're playing and have them, the relative volume's about the same, but then I just wanna bring the entire bass section or the group of bass parts down in the mix, that would allow me, by grouping them all into one main bus, I can just bring all the bass parts down just a touch, or up just a touch. It's also useful for things like vocals or the drums. So a lot of times when you're doing a mix down, you don't want to go and go track by track to bring each, each part of the song in and out. You may just have the drums, your bass, some pads parts, and then some vocal parts. And so your mix may be much simpler when you're using groups or buses. So instead of having to do individual channels, you just bring down that group. So it could be all the vocals comped into just a stereo mix, and that gets brought down. So let's, uh, let's look at an example of how grouping would be beneficial in this particular song. I've got a few bass parts here, and what I'm gonna do is I wanna group them all together so that they're on their own main bus. So the quickest way to do that is I'm gonna select all three of them, and I'm gonna right click 
and we're going to go to Route 2, New Output Bus. By doing that, it takes the output of all three of those channels and puts it into its own stereo channel. Now, like I mentioned before, that allows us to just take the overall level of all the bass down, right? But I could also do things like processing the entire group of that bass sound. So let's say I took the bass sounds and I want to run them through a, I don't know, a, a filter. Something where I can tweak the whole section of bass sounds. I can go into that bus, which is now a separate device in the rack, and just slap a filter here. And I'm going to go to this uh, Synapse analog filter. So I've got that now on the, the bus of all the bass sounds. So if I just solo that out, and I'm listening, that way I can kind of bring in the bass. If I wanted to take some of the high end off and bring the bass down slowly to get to that high end, that's taken all the bass sounds that might be in that group and allow me to filter. You could do that for drums, vocals, what have you. So it's pretty handy to have that capability within grouping. That could also be a way to do things like compressing an entire group, controlling the dynamics of an entire section, the bass section, or the pads, or the vocals, and things like that. So grouping is, is really a feature that's it's been missing for a while, but it's in there now, and they've implemented it really well. And it's going to streamline your workflow to get the better sounding mix as well. So moving from the busing, I want to show you another feature which is added in the mixer, which is called parallel processing. So we're going to go to the drums for this, because most commonly when people talk about parallel processing, it usually is used in, in description of something called parallel compression or New York compression. Essentially what you're doing with parallel processing is you're taking a channel and you're making a split version or a sort of duplicate of it, and you're taking that duplicate and running it through some effect. In this instance, maybe we'll run it through a compressor. But you're going to do a really heavy amount of compression, probably some that, if you listen to it on its own, it's not going to sound very good. When you mix that signal back in with the original, what you get with the combined signal becomes a completely different thing. And in the case of New York compression or parallel compression, it actually fattens up the entire mix and the entire sound. And then we're going to create a parallel channel, and we'll do some compression on that. All right, so we're going to right click on this. We're going to go to create parallel channel. And so now we've got a version of the drums right here, which if I solo with that first track, that's the two mixed together. And on this drum part, I'm going to go to the rack, and I'm going to put some pretty heavy compression on this one. So that's the parallel channel here. And we're just going to call up something. Maybe, uh, let's see which effect. I think the Rough Rider compressor is a good one for that. So we get a pretty high ratio. A little bit of makeup gain on that. Give it some attack. So I've added that compressor in there, and I think maybe I might want to dirty up the parallel channel a bit too, give it a little grunge. So we're going to go in here and let's add in, oh, I don't know, I think a scream would be a good one to add in here. So we'll go to a scream distortion, and we'll put that right after the compressor. So you hear what we've got going on here now is that original channel, we take off the parallel channel, there's our original drums, and then we'll bring in our parallel process drums underneath it. It just gives it that little bit of extra edge. Now that could be anything. I mean, in this instance, I'm doing uh, some compression and a little bit of distortion, or a fair amount of distortion actually, to kind of bring up and give it some attitude. But let's say I wanted to not give it such a, a, an extreme effect like that, but maybe some flanging or some phasing. Really, whatever you want to put on there, you can put on there. So I could do that on the bass parts, uh, the bass group even, the bus. I could create a parallel version of the bus. So we would just go over here, onto the bus that we created earlier, right click, and we can create a parallel channel, and again, repeat the same process. So it's really flexible. It's a lot that you can do with that to really sculpt your sound. So parallel processing, though it's been possible before in Reason, it's never been this easy. So that definitely is another workflow enhancement that's just going to make your mixes, again, sound much better. The next feature I want to show you is something that's called audio slicing and audio quantize. What you can do now in Reason 7 is you can import any audio file or record any audio file and you can quantize it. And it's basically using the same technology that their program Recycle allows you to have, which is by taking the attack transients or hit points of a signal, it puts in a slice, and then you can move the slice markers apart from each other or closer together. And that's how you can do your quantizing and whatnot. 
So let's do this. We're just going to import some audio file here. And I've got uh, this in here, which probably work. We'll put it in right at that point. Let's zoom in a little bit. See what it looks like when it came in. So we'll do it in the edit mode. I double clicked on the clip. And as you can see, right away, as soon as I just brought in a WAV file, regardless of what the tempo was, I've got slice markers here. And so, since I don't know what the tempo of this particular audio file was, I want it to fit in, let's say, two bars. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click and drag the end to make it fit within a two-bar phrase. Now, if I solo this out and listen to it, and then along with the rest of the song, and it's going to be pretty low in volume, so I might want to bring this sucker up a bit. I'm going to go back here, and there it is. I'm going to copy and paste it too, so we have it a couple of times. And let's hear what it sounds like with that slice in there, or with that audio file that's sliced in there. Now let's say the audio file that we brought in, it's sliced up, but it's not really grooving with the rest of the track. There might be a different sort of a groove that's happening in some of the parts that were played, and this particular file that I brought in doesn't really follow that groove. Well, normally that would be a problem because it's audio and there was no way to quantize audio. But now that we have these slice markers and the ability to work with slices, I could actually quantize. So I'm going to take these noise pump slices that are in here, and I'm just going to quantize the whole thing. So we're going to take all of those, right click on them, and we're going to go to our quantize. I'm going to set that up here in our window. And let's go to, I don't know, I'm going to go with, let's say, a 16 triplet. Let's see how that feels on that. And it's now taken the slices of that audio file and give it a triplet feel. So let's hear it now. And it's kind of rush in there. So I might tweak that a bit more. We'll undo that, and I might go with a shuffle feel instead of a triplet feel. So you just have the ability here, and that, that's a totally different thing that we've had in Reason prior to this. So it's a really welcome addition, and it allows us to take performances, whether they be recorded audio files or ones that you've imported, and fix the timing. And that's not something we had before. So that and combined with the ability to transpose in a clip, it really means that any audio that you bring into Reason now has the ability to work within the song transposing it, quantizing it, you have a lot more flexibility now. So it's a welcome feature addition. It's sort of like getting a baby version of Recycle just Im embedded into Reason in itself in Reason 7. So let's move on to another really exciting feature. And this is one that people have been asking for, myself included, for a very, very long time. And we finally have MIDI out inside of Reason. And this allows us to do a lot of really interesting stuff. Of course, the traditional taking a MIDI sequence that you've recorded and triggering some external synth, whether it be an analog synth that has MIDI or maybe a drum machine that you have that you want to sync up to Reason and have the MIDI clock being sent from Reason and record some performances from your drum machine. All of that is possible now in Reason 7. But, as Propellerhead usually does, when they added the MIDI output device out of Reason, they actually gave it a few extra little tricks up its sleeve. And I want to actually show you one of those right now. So we've got MIDI connected right now. I've got a USB connected to the Moog Minotaur. And I'm using Reason. And I'm going to play just the QWERTY keyboard here to trigger notes. I've got an arpeggiator running. And I'm just going to play some stuff here and show you how it sounds. And then we'll talk about how I set it up. here and the sound was coming out of the Moog. So completely different. This is new. This is something you could not do with Reason before version 7. So let's talk a little bit about how I've set this up so you can see it in action. So as you can see here, what I did is I created an RPG-8 and I've connected it to the external MIDI instrument. So with the external MIDI instrument, 
whatever you've actually got connected to your computer, whether it be MIDI interfaces or a device like the Minotaur that actually has a USB to MIDI built in, you'll see it appear right down here on your list of ports. So by selecting the, the Minotaur, if I were to just play some notes with the arpeggiator, I'm getting the arpeggiated notes, and they're gonna be completely in time and in sync with what's happening on the sequencer in Reason. There's also another thing that we can do, which is we have the ability to change some things. Let's say we've got a knob here, which is a, a knob that can be assigned to a controller number. So let's say I wanted to tweak the filter. If I assign that knob that's on the external MIDI instrument to the same controller number that the Minotaur receives for the cutoff frequency, then I can actually record automation and use the automation in Reason Sequencer to play back during the song. Again, really cool. But there's another little trick, and that is because Reason is a sort of modular environment, when you flip that rack around, there's a lot of stuff that's going on behind the rack where you can get into some interesting configurations with control voltages and audio. Well, that also applies to this external MIDI device. The external MIDI device has an assignable input, a CV input, that will actually take over that control knob. So if I have that knob, let's say, assigned to cut off on this Minotaur, and I use I've got a pulsar here, which is an LFO. It's a device that sends out modulation. I take its output and, and assign it to that knob. What's going to happen when I turn it on is that right away, my filter is being modulated by the LFO coming out of reason. This has a lot of really interesting uses and implications. That means that I could create these really complex CV or modulation possibilities inside of Reason, which we have that ability to do, and send that control voltage information out as MIDI to some MIDI device. And that's something that's really unique. That's something that I have not seen before in any other software, so that's going to be one that I think when people see that in action, they're going to be really excited about it as well. But all in all, having MIDI out of Reason is a welcome addition. And I think we're going to see a lot more people using it in different ways, having Reason used in a live performance, or using it with your analog sense that you have at home, or MIDI sense that you have at home. So thank goodness we've got MIDI out in Reason. I'm excited, and hopefully you guys will like it as well. So we've covered a lot of the new features here. We've got the parallel processing in the mixer channel, the Spectrum EQ, and the busing. We've covered the audio slice quantizing, the ability to bring in audio, record audio, and quantize it, have that sort of mini recycle built in. And we've also covered the big one for me, which is the MIDI out of Reason, and the ability to control external MIDI devices from within Reason itself. So if you want to learn some more about Reason, check out the Reason course here at DubSpot in New York. I'm James Bernard, and thanks for watching. Hi, so we got Spectrum EQ, we got that, we got parallel processing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's the import MP3. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.